Imagine powering a remote campsite with clean, renewable energy for just $1,000, and you can build it yourself. In this video, we'll walk you through every detail of designing and building a 1 kilowatt microhydro system on a remote mountain site, with a budget of $500 for the system and $500 for the piping. We're sharing all the design and build steps so you can easily replicate this project after watching. Stick around to see how we brought sustainable power to a stunning tropical mountain camping site and watch the full system in action at the beautiful Bumi Luhur camping site near Mount Salak Sikawa waterfall in Indonesia. Our project is set on Mount Salak in Baga Regency, Indonesia, about 80 kilometers from Jakarta. Don't worry if you're not in Indonesia, the components we used are widely available and affordable, making this system easy to replicate anywhere in the world. The power comes from a pristine mountain stream with a waterfall, providing a 25-meter drop from the inlet to the turbine, perfect for our setup, and a pipe run of about 80 meters. This natural elevation makes it ideal for harnessing hydropower with a Pelton turbine. Let's dive into the heart of the system, the Pelton turbine. We chose a Pelton design for its efficiency and suitability for high-head, low-flow water sources like our waterfall. To keep things simple yet effective, we opted for a four-nozzle setup. While you can buy Pelton wheels online in various shapes and sizes, we decided to craft our own for precision and cost savings. Using a downloaded CAD file of a well-designed bucket, we scaled it to fit our setup with help from ChatGPT, which crunched the numbers for head, flow, nozzle count, and desired power output of 1 kilowatt at the right RPM. Our friends at the University of Indonesia used a CNC machine to craft the buckets from durable aluminum. We considered 3D printing them for a cheaper option, but plastic buckets might erode over time due to sand in the water jet, so aluminum was the safer bet. Next, we built the turbine's core components. The axle was crafted from stainless steel using a traditional lathe for durability. To ensure smooth and long-lasting operation, we used two automotive bearings to support the axle, housed in a robust bearing holder mill from a scrap truck axle. This sturdy holder not only secured the axle but also served as the mounting point for the turbine and other components. We welded additional plates and bars to complete the assembly, creating a solid foundation for the turbine. For generating electricity, we chose a second-hand car alternator rated at 90 amps. At 12 volts, that's roughly 1 kilowatt of power, perfect for our needs. We carefully inspected and tested the alternator before purchase to ensure reliability. Car alternators are affordable, easy to service, and can be replaced by any basic mechanic, making them a great choice. For higher power needs, a larger alternator from a truck could be used, as long as the Pelton wheel is sized appropriately to drive it. To make the system practical, we included a second-hand car battery with 95% of its original capacity. The battery is essential for the alternator to function properly and provides energy storage to handle peak loads above 1 kW or during turbine maintenance. To convert the 12V DC power to usable 220V AC, we used a budget-friendly Chinese inverter costing just $50. It supports 1 kilowatt of constant power and 2 kilowatts at peak, delivering a decent near sine wave output that works reliably for the camping site's needs. To keep everything secure, we built a frame from lightweight roofing steel, anchored into a concrete base at the bottom of the waterfall. We chose a spot safe from flooding, even during the heaviest rains. To protect the system from the elements, we constructed a simple wooden hut around it, ensuring the equipment stays dry and operational in the rugged mountain environment. Initially, we attached the alternator directly to the turbine, hoping the turbine's 800 to 1000 RPM under load would suffice. However, car alternators need higher speeds to perform efficiently, so we redesigned the setup. We added a pulley system with a 3-inch pulley on the alternator and a 12-inch pulley on the turbine, boosting the alternator's speed to 3,000 to 4,000 RPM, for times the turbine's speed. A key tip, make the alternator mount adjustable to set the belt tension just right for smooth operation. For initial testing, we used a simple laundry bucket as a temporary turbine housing, and it worked surprisingly well. However, for long-term durability, we upgraded to a proper housing made from 12mm nylon sheets. 
Nylon is easy to work with and tough enough to withstand the water jets and environmental wear, ensuring our turbine stays protected. Now, let's talk about the piping that brings water to the turbine. We use 3-inch HDPE pipe, commonly used in water utilities, because it's flexible, pressure-resistant, and widely available. At the inlet, we drilled holes in the pipe and wrapped it with a metal mesh to keep debris like leaves and twigs from clogging the nozzles. At the turbine end, we built a distributor using pipe adapters and hoses to feed the four nozzles, each equipped with a shut-off valve for control. To handle the high water pressure, we secured the distributor with screws and glue. A crucial tip, avoid sharp angles in the piping, as they reduce water flow. Keep everything as straight as possible or use hoses for smooth water delivery. Installing the 80-meter pipe along the waterfall was a massive challenge, especially ensuring it could withstand heavy rain and flooding. We cut stainless or galvanized metal strips and anchored them to the rock face with dynabolts for a secure hold. Transporting the pipe two kilometers up the mountain and securing it involved a huge team effort from the local community, showcasing the power of teamwork in bringing this project to life. The nozzles are critical for the turbine's performance. They must deliver a perfectly straight water jet to maximize power and efficiency, any flaw can drastically reduce output. We made our nozzles from PVC water pipes filled with epoxy, then used a Dremel tool to drill and shape holes ranging from 0.5 to 2 cm. Smaller holes produce faster jets for higher RPM at idle, while larger holes provide more torque for better performance under load. The jet size also needs to match the Pelton bucket width. After testing, we settled on just over 1 cm for the best balance of power and efficiency under high load. This part required some trial and error to get right. To enhance the system's reliability, we added an MPPT solar charge controller. While not strictly necessary, it protects the battery from overcharging or deep discharging and makes it easy to monitor the system's voltage and power output. The MPPT introduced a challenge by separating the alternator from the battery, but we solved this by adding a capacitor bank to maintain power to the alternator's rotor. We also added a potentiometer to the alternator's sensing wire, allowing us to lower the sensed voltage and trick the alternator into increasing its output voltage. This tweak improved the MPPT's efficiency by optimizing the voltage difference between the battery and the input. After ironing out initial design and installation issues, the system has been running reliably for months, providing steady power to the Bumi Luhur camping site built by the local community. The project even won an award for community empowerment, highlighting its impact. This micro-hydro system is a testament to what's possible with ingenuity, teamwork, and a modest budget. Safety is key, though, high voltages in a wet environment and fast-spinning components require caution. ChatGPT was very useful during the design phase, helping with calculations and offering tips for safe, durable construction. Want to see this micro-hydro system in action? Visit the Bumi Luhur camping site near the stunning Chikawa waterfall on Mount Salak, Google Maps link is in the description. With all the design and build details we've shared, you can replicate this system anywhere with a suitable water source. Get inspired and start your own DIY hydropower project. Thanks for watching, and happy DIYing! Like and subscribe if you like this project and would like to get notified when we publish other similar videos, we have several more interesting projects in the works.